Good morning. My name is Pastor Kobe, and I'm the children's pastor here at Hopewell. I'm really glad you decided to tune in with us today. Glad you could make it. Hope you guys are having a wonderful week, and uh, I want you to know that I think about you guys who are just watching online, who don't make it in here to, uh, to be with us in person, and I pray about you guys sometimes. And uh, if you have any prayer requests that you would like me and the rest of the people on our prayer team to be praying for, uh, you can submit those prayer requests on our website, uh, or you could also just email me directly. I'd be happy to pray for uh, whatever it is you guys have going on, anything big or small. I love to hear what's going on with you guys, especially since I don't get to see you here in person. So uh, if you want to do that, please go for it. I'd love to be able to pray with you and uh, hear about what's going on in your life. Um, so with that, we're actually going to get started today with a missions moment. So we have a short clip for you, and I'll pick it up after that. Life is busy, but if we could just stop everything and take a bird's eye view a little higher, there, we can see the multitude. That's a lot of people, many who have yet to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. God has a plan. He has always had a plan. Us, followers of Jesus, are to go to all corners of the world to take the gospel to those who have never heard. Together, we are all a part of that plan. We support missionaries who are helping the hurting and showing God's love through our prayers and giving. The world is a very big place, but together, through Jesus, we can tell the nations about Jesus and give the multitudes an opportunity to hear and respond to the gospel. Together, we can make a difference for Jesus. So that was just talking about how we are called to tell people all over the world about Jesus and how the Holy Spirit calls us and guides us to do so. And uh, we are going to see just that in our Bible story today about how the Holy Spirit calls one man to go and share the gospel with someone, share the good news about Jesus. But uh, that clip also talked about how when Christians work together, and it's not just Uh, one person at a time trying to do their own thing, we can do so much more and reach so many more people. And that is a lot of what uh, the point of us being together as a church is for. They said it in the clip that God's plan for telling everyone is the church itself. That is our job. And so we are not just here to uh, have a good time with each other, learn about God, and, and be uplifted ourselves, but We are to work together to tell more and more people about Jesus. And so I want to encourage you, if you don't already, to be praying for uh, the people that are around you in your life and everybody else here in our church and even the missionaries that we support uh, all in many places who are uh, not knowing Jesus, that those people who don't know Jesus yet, that we could be uh, fulfilling the mission to tell them the good news of the gospel. So with that, we are starting a new unit, so we're going to check out our new, brand new big picture question. Our big picture question is this, why does the church exist? And I got a little bit ahead of myself talking about uh, why the church exists. I'm going to read this for you guys. So the church exists to glorify God by worshiping him, showing his love, and telling others about Jesus. So there is uh, several, three parts here. First one, worshiping God. God is so great. He is so good and he is so worthy of our worship and our praise. So it's a big deal and it's important that we give him that honor and that is why we make that a priority here. And We sing songs to him and we give time to that because he is worthy for it. Next one is uh, we are to be showing God's love. Hopefully everything we do here at church shows love to people in one way or another and uh, so everything we do should be showing the love of God. And the last one is telling others about Jesus. This is making it a priority to make sure that people who don't know about Jesus, don't know about his love, don't know how awesome and good and worthy of praise God is, how holy he is, that we need to be telling people about that too. And so there's a lot of different pieces to what it means to be the church. And uh, we are working hard to try and make sure those all happen uh, here at Hopewell and that you get to be a part of it. Uh, even if you're just online watching at home. So again, thanks for tuning in. Uh, so that is our big picture question. Let's read the question together, and, uh, and then we'll move on. Just read this. One, two, three. Why does the church 
exist, exist to worship God, show his love, and tell others about Jesus. So we also have a new memory verse for this new unit. Uh, this is out of Colossians chapter 1, verse 18. So Colossians, that means this was a, Paul, a letter that Paul wrote to the church in Colossae. And he had a reminder for these people, and it, it was this. He, when he says he here, it's talking about Jesus, says he is also the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he might come to have first place in everything. And so this is uh, almost kind of a continuation of the idea that was in our verse last month. Our verse last unit talked about how we as the church are one body, though we are many, we are one. And so this is the idea that if we are the church, are the body, what part of the body is Jesus? Jesus is the head of the body. He's the one who makes the decisions, who says what we should be doing. He's the shot caller. He's the super, super, super most important part of it. So Jesus is the head of the body that is the church. So let's get some motions for uh, our, our new verse here. So he, he is talking about Jesus. So to remind ourselves, we're going to do sign language for Jesus. Just touch your palms. So he is also the head of the body, the church. So we do head of the body. And then for the church, I looked it up in sign language again, all right? For the church, you're going to make a fist. And you're going to make a C. And you're going to go tap, tap. Just two taps of the C on your fist. The church. So he is also the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning. So to think of like the beginning of time, the beginning when it thumbs over your shoulders. He is the beginning, the firstborn, big number one. Maybe imagine like you have a foam finger on. You see those number one at the sports thing. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he might have the first place. So we're just going to do first again, even bigger one. So he's the firstborn of the dead, so that he might come to have the first place in everything. So just everything. Colossians 1, 18. So do an 8, do 4 on each hand. That's 8. 1, 18. So uh, stand up. We're going to try and go through this together. We'll go nice and slow, and I'll lead you with the motions. Uh, it goes like this. Stand on up, ready? One, two, three. He is also the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he might have the first place in everything. Colossians 1, 18. All right, nice job, guys. So we're going to be uh, spending this unit memorizing this verse together. Uh, it's a great continuation of what we were thinking about with our verse last, last unit. So uh, go ahead and work on that. You can look it up at home with your parents, Colossians 1.18, and spend some time working on that. That would be really good. Then you'll have it extra good memorized for next time we're doing this here together. All right. So uh, last week, if you were with us, if you tuned in, last week we learned about how in the book of James... The book of James, he tells us that it's not enough for us just to come to church and hear about God and believe in him and talk about him, but that we have to do what we believe in and that we need to actually show the love for people with our actions. We shouldn't just see someone who is hungry and cold and say, oh, God bless, Jesus wants you to be warm and fed, all right, good, God bless. No, we need to actually do something about it. Our actions are some of the greatest proofs of our faith, of the things that we believe. James also told us that one of the best ways to show our faith and put our faith into action is to take care of widows and orphans and other people who don't really have anybody to take care of them. If you look around, around you in your community and in your school, and you, you're, you will find people who uh, really don't have a lot of people backing them up. A lot of people don't go to church like we do. I know uh, a lot of you, you have your family that takes care of you, but if something's going on with your family, the church often steps in to be the ones to take care of what's going on in the family, to help make sure you have food, you have somewhere to stay, and that sort of thing. But there are people who are not a part of the church, who aren't believers, who don't go to church. And so when something crazy goes on in their family, there isn't always someone to make sure they have food and have somewhere to stay. 
And so that is where we, the church, can step up and find them and be the ones who give them food, give them somewhere to stay, and tell them about the love of Jesus that he has for them. So that is what we talked about last week from the book of James. This week, this week we're going to see uh, one of Jesus' disciples as he was being faithful to obey what the Holy Spirit told him. We are looking at... Uh, to talk about Philip. Philip was one of Jesus' disciples, and he was one of the leaders in the church. And he heard from the Holy Spirit. Actually, the angel sent uh, uh, the Holy Spirit sent an angel to him first. The angel told him, "You need to go uh, to walk on this road. I need you to walk on this road from Jerusalem to Gaza." And so. Uh, this is like out in the middle of the desert. It's, it's not like a normal, cozy, really nice road. It's like out in the middle of the desert kind of road. And so he got up and he went. Philip was on his way because he was obedient and he obeyed what the angel told him to do. So he got up and he's on this road. And when he's on this road, next to him on the road or coming along, he sees an Ethiopian man. That's just a man from a country called Ethiopia. If you don't know where that is, it's uh, down in Africa. And so he was, sees this Ethiopian man on the road and he was... Uh, in a chariot. He was a prominent guy, so he was rich, he had money, he was a, a high official of the queen of Ethiopia, so he was pretty up there within, in, uh, in the Ethiopian government. And so he was in his chariot, he was riding along, he had been in Jerusalem, because he had come to worship God at the temple, which is super cool that he came from so far away to worship the one true God at the temple. But uh, as Philip was walking, he heard him reading he realized he was reading from the, the prophet Isaiah. And uh, this is what he read. He read it out loud. Uh, actually, never mind. I, missed, I skipped a spot. So he heard him reading, and Philip noticed the Holy Spirit nudging him, saying, hey, you should go up and talk to him. You need to go up and, and, and see if he understands what he's reading. And so Philip walked over to the chariot, and he walked over to the Ethiopian official, and he said, hey, do, do you understand what you're reading? And the official said, not really. I, I don't know how I can understand it unless I have somebody to explain it to me. And so he invited Philip up into the chariot with him. He said, come on up. Talk to me about what I'm reading. So he came up in there and he read to him this section that he was reading. And it goes like this. He was led like a sheep to the slaughter. And as a lamb is silent before its shearer, he does not open his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who will describe his generation? For his life was taken from the earth. So the, the Ethiopian official, he says, I don't really understand this. Is Isaiah talking about himself here, or is he talking about someone else? And Philip was able to tell him, oh, this is perfect. Listen, Isaiah isn't talking about himself in this passage. He's talking about the Messiah. His name is Jesus. And so even though this Ethiopian official had been coming to Jerusalem to worship the one true God, he still hadn't heard about Jesus yet. And so because Philip was faithful to follow where the Holy Spirit told him to go, told him to go up to the cart, he was able to tell this Ethiopian man about Jesus. And as they were traveling along, they talked more, and he put his faith and his trust in Jesus. He became a believer. And as they were moving along, they came to a, uh, a, a, some water. I don't know if it was a pond or a river. They were on a desert, so it was probably just a little, little pond, and it was probably kind of icky too. But he had been told by Philip about how when you become a believer that you should be baptized. And so he said, well, stop the chariot, stop the chariot. I want to be baptized. And so they got out, and they went down into the water, and Philip baptized him just like uh, we were commanded by Jesus in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And here's something that was super cool. It's, this is kind of crazy. So uh, he ordered the chariot to stop. They went down into the water, and he baptized him. And when they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord carried Philip away, and the eunuch did not see him any longer. But he went on his way rejoicing. So I don't know if you caught what just happened there. So the, he baptized him, he put him out of the water, and when he came back up, Philip was gone. The Holy Spirit had like teleported him away somewhere else. It says he actually took him to Azotus. So he was like teleported from this pond in the middle of the desert with this Ethiopian eunuch to Azotus because God, I guess, decided, all right, you did what I sent you there for. I have another mission for you. Bloop! and just teleported him. It was super cool. And the eunuch came up out of the water and goes, oh my goodness, he's gone. 
But I believe in Jesus, and I've been baptized, and he was happy, and he celebrated and went back to his car and made his way back to his country. And so this was a super, super cool event that came about just because Philip was faithful to follow the direction of the angel and the Holy Spirit, and this man came to know Jesus. And for all we know, he went back to Ethiopia and told more people and more people. He became a part of the church and started to continue to carry this message of Jesus. And so, uh, he celebrated and he was rejoicing and, and happy in his new salvation. Welcome back. Let's go ahead and check out our story point for today. And then we're going to talk a little bit about what you just saw in your video. So, our story point is this. The Holy Spirit led Philip to tell the Ethiopian man about Jesus. So the Holy Spirit led Philip to tell the Ethiopian man about Jesus. So our Questions to Kid video had a great question, asking, is it okay to be friends with someone who's not a Christian? And Pastor Brian had a great answer, yes, we should definitely have, Christian, have friends who aren't Christians. In fact, this, this Ethiopian man, he worshiped God, but he wasn't a Christian because he had not heard of Jesus. He did not follow the Christ, Jesus. Well, that makes you a Christian. And so uh, even uh, you may have friends who believe in God but aren't really Christians. You may have friends who uh, don't believe in God. But it is really, really good for us to have cr uh, friends who aren't Christians because how else are we going to have people to talk to about Jesus? So uh, I hope that you have people in your life uh, that do know about Jesus, that love you dearly, and, you, and that care for you, have close friends in that way. But if you don't know anybody who doesn't know Jesus, maybe talk to your parents about a way that you can uh, make some friends who don't know Jesus so that you can be an influence for them. Uh, that's a good thing, conversation to have with your parents. Be like, hey, if all the people we know are already believers, are we really fulfilling this mission of telling people about Jesus? We need to find a way to talk to some people who don't know Jesus already. So that's a good conversation to have with your parents. So beyond that, uh, here's a really good point from uh, this conversation that Philip had with the Ethiopian, is this. The beautiful thing about the Bible, about God's Word, is that anybody who can read, can read it. But the trouble is, he was able to read it, but he couldn't quite understand it. He needed someone to help him to explain it. And uh, so there are a lot of people who may have heard a lot of things about the Bible, may know a couple verses here and there, but still need a lot of help to understand uh, what it all means about Jesus and need to have it explained to them. And so, uh, if you or any of your friends have any questions about stuff that you read in the Bible and you need help to understand it, please ask someone, ask your parents, or um, ask me. Again, you can uh, contact me on my email and everything too. You can ask me questions there too. Um, I would love to help answer any questions that you have. And uh, if you have any of your friends who are also wondering and having questions about it, um, I hope you can work with them to try and find some answers because uh, it is worth digging into God's word and finding the truth about Jesus. So uh, let's go ahead and pray together and uh, that'll be it for today. So let's pray. Dear Jesus, I thank you that you have given us your Holy Spirit and that you can guide us just as you guided Philip to tell people about Jesus. Pray that you would help us to be a good example and a good witness to those that we know that don't already know you. Pray that you could uh, help us to explain your word well to those around us and help us to ask the right questions to under and understand anything we don't already understand from your word, Jesus. So I pray all this in Jesus' name, amen. All right, thanks again for tuning in. Hope you have a wonderful week. Again, would love to hear from you with prayer requests or anything else or any questions you have about what you've been reading in your Bible. Uh, have a great week, and I'll see you again next week. Bye-bye.